We are now looking at a teaching video on coordinates geometry and the subtopic is equations of circles. Now when we look at equation of a circle, there are basically two forms that we can put the equations of a circle in. The first form, standard form, is like this. Bracket x minus a bracket squared plus y minus b bracket squared equals r squared. Now, the center of the circle will be what you see here. If you have negative a, then it will be a for the x coordinate. And if you have a minus b, then the y coordinate would be b. So this is the coordinates of the center of the circle. For radius, it will be r. The value of r is located here. So we can see that this is the unexpanded form where we don't expand x minus a bracket squared or y minus b bracket squared. The general form will be the expanded form. So after the expansion, the general form will look like x squared plus y squared plus 2fx plus 2gx plus c equals 0. So the center of the circle will be, I'll take the negative of f for the x coordinates of the center of the circle and then minus g as the y coordinate of the center of the circle. As for the radius, will be square root of the f squared plus the g squared minus c. And c is the constant in this general form. So we have got the unexpanded form and we also have the expanded form. So when you are asked to find the equation of a circle, which form would you put in? So it's alright if we can have this form, but most of the time we can expand it and present the final answer in general form. Or if it's specified in a certain form, then we go according to the specified form. Now we look at, in point two, common cases. The first one related to diameter. So if we have a diameter, a straight line that cut through the center of the circle, then we have the center of the circle as the midpoint of the two points here on the circumference of the circle. So to look for the center of the circle, given these two extreme points on the circumference, I will use the midpoint formula, which is taking the averages of the coordinates of x, xa plus xb over 2, comma. Then I will take the average of the two y values, ya plus yb over 2 bracket. 
So that is the midpoint formula. As for the radius, we are basically just talking about this distance halved because a diameter is equals to 2 times the radius. So if I can just take this distance and half it, I'll get the radius. So what I do is use the distance formula for AB and times half. So half, then the distance formula, XB minus XA bracket square plus yb minus ya bracket squared. So for the center of a circle, I consider the midpoint formula. For radius, I consider the distance formula. For the next one, we look at one that relates to the tangent. A tangent to a circle is a straight line that touches the circle at a point. In this case, the tangent touches this circle at C. And there is also another property that we must bear in mind, that is, the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. But for this case, the center of the circle will be just this point here. If that point is not given, what we can do, if the tangent is given, then from the tangent, I can work out the gradient of tangent. And also, I will be able to work out the gradient of the normal. These two lines whose gradients in product will give me minus 1. Meaning, if I put it in this form, tangent has a gradient. So this is the gradient of the tangent times the gradient of the normal. is equals to negative 1. So if the gradient of the normal is found, then I can work out the equation of the normal using the point of contact. Then I would be able to find this particular point. This point is the point of intersection of the circle and also this straight line. So if these two points are found, then I can use a midpoint formula to work out the center of the circle. But for now, I will just put down here this point, point O, center of the circle. As for the radius, it will be this point to this point. So the distance between these two points. So using the distance formula, I would have xc minus xo bracket squared plus yc minus yo bracket squared. So if I had just found this point using the midpoint formula, 
then with the information of these two points using the distance formula I can work out the radius Now we look at point 3 Location determinant of points in relation to a circle So simply put, if I'm given a point and I have information of the center of the circle and also a point on the circumference This is what we'll do to determine whether that point maybe point B or point C will be inside a circle or outside of a circle in fact, the third point would be whether it's on the circle meaning on the circumference of the circle so if I can just work out this distance which I just call OA and if point B is just outside this is B bracket XB comma YB now you can see we are basically just comparing the distance between OA to the distance between OB so if B is indeed outside of the circle then I would expect OB to be greater than OA if I have a point point C C bracket XC comma YC bracket if the point is in the circle then OC will be this line here so I'm making comparison the distance of OC to the distance of OA which is just the radius so if OC is less than OA then the point C must be in the circle so we have introduced to you some of these rules the standard form the general form of equation of circle and then we look at common cases given the radius and the center of the circle how to work out the equation of a circle and other cases like this whether a point is inside of a circle or outside of a circle so this is what this video is all about